You know, we're in the Christmas season nowadays, and a lot of people, Christmas season means different to a lot of different people. I mean, when we should be looking at the birth of Christ and at our Lord and Savior, but people have got so wrapped in running here, running there, make sure they got the right gift for the right person or, or this, did they get this gift or did, did it? And they, we kind of lose things in the translation of what Christmas really means. And, uh, but there's a lot of frustration, you know, uh, people because a lot of times they've been through a divorce or they've been through somebody had died and they missed those people so much. And there's a lot of grief that goes with the Christmas season, you know, and uh, and it made me start thinking that, you know, used to they what you used to couldn't say, they tried to say you can't say Merry Christmas to anybody. But then we had a president that says, it's all right to say Merry Christmas, and we got it all back. I remember where they just said, you got to say Happy Holidays and not Merry Christmas. But it made me think about the word Merry Christmas. And it made me think about Christians and other people that, that you don't see Merry among people nowadays. You see so many people just downtrodden. They just, uh, there's so much fear in them. You just don't see the merry, the merriness of Christmas like you used. Now, if we get back to the basics and don't worry about the gifts, don't worry about the turkey, don't worry about all this other stuff, and really get back to yeah. Christmas, which is the anointed one. Mm-hmm. That's what it's all about, Christ the anointed one. But, yes. but we need to understand that Mary, what does Mary mean? Well, if you look at the word Mary, it means that, it, that, means that you should be pleasant, oh, amen. agreeable, and delightful. Oh. And that's the way this season should be. In fact, this is the way we all should be at all times because we serve a risen Savior. Oh, and when you amen. believe amen. that you have Christ in you, so you should walk not only at Christmas season, we should be merry all the time. Amen. That we should have this spirit in us that we're pleasant to deal with. How many people do you run into just, they just seem so down and they don't have any pleasantness in them. They seem very unpleasant. They feel down and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. what, what's bad is that I see this in Christians that here they're supposed to have Christ in them as their hope of glory, but they're going along with long faces, and you wouldn't know that they were a Christian than than a, a rock on the side of the road. I mean, I mean, honest with you, that you just that they're just they they're so unpleasant because they felt like they've been dealt the wrong type of life, and they don't look that we do serve that risen Savior, that 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 we have his righteousness, that we have, you know, joy in us, righteousness, you know, and peace in us because of he in us. And they forget that they have this in them. Well, another thing is that how many times that you've seen squabbles among church people? I mean, that you see, we talked about it today, yeah. how some churches, they split over because the piano wasn't over this way, the piano was that, that way, or they didn't. I remember I was pastor in a church and a woman got mad at me because we had a Sunday school teacher that moved off and we needed a Sunday school teacher for the young kids. So I appointed, uh, I forget who I appointed to do it. Uh, Oh, Melissa was in college. So when she came home, I asked her would she teach the Sunday school right now. And this woman came to me and she was mad at me. And I says, "Uh, why are you so mad at me? Well, you didn't ask me to do it. I says, I didn't know you wanted to do it. <laughs> you know, and so, but there are so many people yeah. that want to be hurt. Mm-hmm. They're so unagreeable. They're looking to be hurt. There's no merriment in them at all. And, you know, if we're merry, it should be delightful. Because we should yeah. have, we should... Because delightful, we think of light. We have the light of Jesus in us. And we should let our light shine. But we should, 
We should live the Merry Christmas because Christ, the anointed one, is in us. And we should be more merry and don't let the fears of life and don't let the things of life get us down. Well, I kind of looked at several verses with the word merry in it. And, uh, and they all happen in Proverbs, uh, the ones I picked out. So, And we'll probably go over them in the next couple of weeks in Sunday school. But the first one is Proverbs 15, 13. Proverbs 15, 13. It says, A merry heart make a cheerful countenance. Oh, amen. But the sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. Now, we see and you can tell that Jesus said, I came to heal the broken hearted. He came, and if we if we release ourselves and say, Lord, I've been broken. My spirit is in turmoil. I'm in confusion. Uh, Lord, there are things into my life that is really, I'm feeling deep in my spirit that I'm hurting. And but he says, a merry heart yes. make of a cheerful countenance. That means that he is here to heal that brokenness. Amen. He is here to heal that contrite spirit. He is here and that Christ in us, we should walk around with a countenance that people will know that you're a Christian because you're letting that light shine through you, that you're showing that pleasantness, the agreeable spirit, that you're showing that delight that you have in Christ. I think that's the thing that people tend to forget, that Jesus should be the joy in our life. And we should go through this and really constantly think not only at the Christmas time, but in our life, mm -hmm. how much joy that he gives us and how much joy of our salvation was. When you first received Jesus, there, there was joy that overfilled you. Mm -hmm. This, But we <clears throat> tend to let the world get us down, that we tend to let the sorrows of our life just take that merriment out of us, that, that, that pleasantness out of us. It kind of, what we have to see of this is with that count, countenance that we have to understand when we show the joy of the Lord in us or that merriment that God has put in us, that, that part of the merry Christmas that's in us, that it produces kindness in us. And when we have kindness, kindness produces kindness. When you're kind to somebody else, they might not be kind right at the first, but if you keep on doing kindness, eventually they will produce also kindness. Mm. And we ask also happens, but on the opposite, on the opposite, rage produces rage. You know, the scripture in the scripture, Bible that says, you know, give and give it to you, whatever you give out, you know, I'm just paraphrasing whatever you give into your bosom, you know, this so a lot of people use that scripture well of money but I think this is part of the Merry Christmas or the part of merriment that we have mm -hmm. is that when we learn to give yeah. kindness, we receive kindness and it produces kindness in other people but if you always in rebellion, you're going to produce rebellion. If you're always in rage and everything ticks you off, well, you're going to tick that other person off too. Mm. So we have to understand that this merriment, a merry heart makes a cheerful countenance. And that way, the countenance is, is your face, your way you oh, project wow. yourself, wow. the way you do. See, a lot of times Christians don't project themselves of Christ in them, they project the critical spirit. You're not like me. Mm. You know, you're not like me. You, you should have Christ. And so they, mm. they yeah. tend to beat people up. 
But when God says, you know, you know, be merry, you will produce cheerfulness. You produce cheerfulness. Well, going back to Proverbs 15, 15, Proverbs 15, 15. It says, all the days of the afflicted are evil. But he that is of a merry heart hath a continual feast. Let me read that again to you. All the days of the afflicted are evil, but he that is of a merry heart continue as a continual feast. You know, we have to look at this. Every one of us have problems in life. But how many times we look at the problems of life affect us more than the joy of the Lord in us? Wow. Mm. Yeah. How many times? Think about that. We let the things of this earth, we let Satan steal, kill, and destroy us. And we feel like we are a victim. See, that's the problem with the, what we see in the world, especially in the United States. They're all trying to produce victim mentality so they people will get into fear so they can be controlled. And so we have to understand this, is that when we're going through things, and we all go through things, mm -hmm. but do we tend to be afflicted tend to take in all those hurts and still have realized, Lord, I know I'm going through something right now, but I know with your strength, yeah. I can be an overcomer by the lamb. Mm. I, With your strength, I know I will get through this mm. because I have that hope with that confident expectations that I have an extended future for myself. Praise God. And we have to see, but yes. too many times we <clears throat> let the evilness of this world or bad circumstances in a, afflict us and we carry that on instead of saying, Lord, give me that joy. Give me that pleasant attitude. Give me, agree with the spirit that mm, we will yes. get through this, yes. that you will lift me up. That you are my strong tower, that when I'm going through things, I can run into you mm -hmm. and I can have yes. that safety. Yes. You know, that's the problem is people in the world that don't know Christ, they don't know a strong tower they can run into to feel safe my, and at my. ease. Yeah. But we have to understand when we think about Merry Christmas, we need to think of that merry part of it, mm -hmm. that merry part of it. And we need to get this. And then it says that he that is married hath a continual feast. Well, what does that mean? Does that mean you're constantly eating? Well, you're going to taste the good life. Mm. You're going to taste the good life. Amen. Because wow. even when things seem wrong, you're yeah. tasting the good life. And you have yeah. that future that is well, that has been ordained for you. Yes, amen. That you know that... Things are going to get better. And you're always mm. saying, Lord, you've made me a blessing to be a blessing to other people. But Lord, I know mm. that I have a blessing coming my way also. So when we go through it, it's a decision in our life. Yeah. Do we fear things? Do we let bad things in our life no. control us? Mm. Too many times I've seen too many people... And myself, too, I've have done it, too, and I have to pray to pray it off of me. Once the, something tries to come into my mind, I have to pray it off of me. And to say, when I was abused or when I was not understood, you know, yeah. that yeah. you have to understand that you don't let that affliction control you. Uh -huh. Go to Christ that has forgiven you and he wants the best for you. In fact, he says he wants to do the good pleasure for you. And we need to understand that, that we need that merriment in ourselves, that we have 
that merry heart, that when we say heart, that is that our total belief system. Do we look at things as bad or we look at things as hope? Mm -hmm. What do we look at? Yeah. Yeah. Do we look at things that get us down? Mm -hmm. Or do we look at things that we can rise above them yes. and don't let circumstances get us down, but get out from under them? So we have to understand that. See, it's a decision here. Do we let the troubles make us have a downcast spirit? Mm. Do we let the things of this world and what people say and do to us mm. and what Satan has laid traps for us, mm. do we let our spirit become so downcast we lose our merriment. Mm, my, we my. lose what Christ is all about. Mm. Do we eat the good life and be satisfied? Mm. Or do we keep eating the dirt of this life instead of the fruits that grow out of the ground? Mm. Mm. Think about that. Mm. Do we eat the dirt around the plant that wants us to bloom. Where are we planted? That makes the difference. Well, I want to look at now uh, one more verse. Proverbs 17, 22. Proverbs 17, 22. This is the one we always hear a lot. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. Mm. Let me repeat that again. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. You know, Jesus again said he came to break, heal the broken spirits. He came to heal them. You know, I've seen people that have something wrong with them, but they're still joyful. And they seem like things don't overcome them as much because they still have that hope. Glory. You can sit and wallow in your sicknesses. Too many people I've seen take their sickness as their badge. You know, they take it and like say, well, I'm sick and this and this. So, so you'll feel sorry for them. There's no joy in them. Nah. But when you, ha I've seen people that things are down and out. They're still married. I got to experience this. I've experienced many times in my life that I'm supposed to die. But I, I, I guess I, sometimes I think you must be stupid. You didn't know you were that bad off. Because I tried to be pleasant to everybody that was around me. I didn't moan and groan and just say, oh, I am so sick. That I don't have no hope. But the Lord gave me, gives me pleasantness because I know that even if something is bad in me, that I can expect a healing because by his stripes I'm healed. But oh, even if I'm not healed and, you know, and I'm taken home, I'm going to be graduated. I don't have to feel all these other things. I'm going in the presence of the king. I'm going to be in the presence of the Lord. Oh, so this is the thing that we have to do. We let circumstances get us down or, like I said, or get out from under us. Yeah. Do we let sickness get us down? Or do we say, Lord, by your stripes, I'm healed. Lord, no matter what I go through, I can endure. Because I can endure all things through Christ Jesus. Glory. And we have to see Glory. that through this, where is our merriment? Mm. Have we been married? Mm. I mean, we have, we have choices every day. To be merry or be downcast, 
be married or have a broken spirit or feel be merry or feel like we're dry to the bones. There's no lifeblood in us. Mm -hmm. See, in your bones you have marrow that produces cells mm -hmm. that gives us life. Mm -hmm. So do you have that dryness? Mm -hmm. Or do we look at <clears throat> at this season, Merry Christmas, that we're pleasant, agreeable, and we're delighted in the Christ that died for us and rose the third day and ascended to heaven and sitting at the right hand of the Father right now make an intercession for us when we're going through so we can say Merry Christmas. Not only during this time, but every day of our life. Let us pray. Father God, instill in us the reason for this season. Father, give us Refresh us now. Father, that when we say Merry Christmas, that we can have that joy, have a pleasant attitude, a soul searching after you. And Father, help us that we can be agreeable with other Christians and other people that we're not into the negative, that we're into the positive. Father, give us the strength that the only that you can give. And Father, we thank you so much that during this season, we can be delighted and what Christ has done for us and what he's continuing doing for us and that what he knows us completely that we can walk out and we can be merry and when we say Merry Christmas to people we really believe it yes. down in the in our spirit. Yes. Let that spirit rise in us. That we can show the joy of the world. And let us be that light. In Jesus name. Amen.